Hi everyone, we're at NEDS 2023 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and we are now on the booth of local shipbuilder Royal IHC, who's showcasing for the first time a seabed crawler for defense applications. To find out more with me today is uh, Shaud De Bruyne, director at IHC Defense. Shaud, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Xavier. Nice to meet you and uh, welcome to the IHC booth. Thank you very much. So, underwater crawler, defense applications, that's, uh, that's the, first, the first time I hear, even hear about this, but uh, I guess it has some relevance for mine warfare, as you're showing behind you, or uh, seabed warfare. It is um, one of the pillars that we are focusing on, uh, next to the fact that we are profiling ourselves as a tier two contractor into the uh, defense market. Uh, we have uh, the seabed crawler, um, which we are marketing. Uh, this is really a 100% um, uh, commercially off the shelf pro uh, pr product, which we uh, have integrated into the uh, mining and dredging markets in the past. So this is used in the oil and gas industry currently? Uh, exactly, for trenching and cable laying. And are you, so you're adapting it for uh, defense applications? Exactly, that's uh, what we are intending. And uh, as we speak, we have the Apollo 2. That is a purely commercial product. Um, that's a 20-ton crawler. Um, and this crawler exists of um, uh, uh, four tracks. And uh, these four tracks create a very stable platform on the seabed. What's the benefit of using such a system for mine warfare and seabed warfare? Um, we like to call it uh, uh, the seabed security um, because our crawler is intended to create a stable platform uh, on the seabed and um, what you see with uh, the crawler behind me, it's, um, it's an empty platform. So we provide this platform with the four tracks uh, the big advantage is it creates a stable platform and it keeps itself horizontally. Because of those four tracks, it can run on 30 degree slopes. And as we know, the North Sea is quite hilly. And this could be the perfect platform uh, to support uh, any type of seabed security application. What is good to understand, it's an empty platform, what I said. Um, but it can be expanded with, as you see in the background, an ROV. Uh, but also with arms, with camera systems, with baskets. So we can use it for applications like um, taking mines out of the sea. Uh, we can use it for um, seabed security applications where it runs on the cable infrastructure just to check if that cable infrastructure is still intact um, or oil and gas applications. Um, it can also have a deterrent factor where, um, where when an investigating vessel um, uh, is, is in that area, it sees that there is a, um, a platform like that, that yeah, they would, would withdraw from, uh, from, from taking further actions. Is it meant to be deployed from a beach or from a vessel, a mothership? Uh, any type of uh, deployment is possible. Um, the first concept could be um, that it's deployed for the, from the beach um, and that it runs into the water um, and uh, from there it does its operations. And a second option is that it's being deployed from a vessel, uh, even a vessel that we are designing at the moment with a moon pool, so it can be deployed covertly. Uh, a third option is it is stable on the seabed. And when it would be stable on the seabed, um, you can think of the, uh, the crawler being on the seabed, stationary, uh, charging itself from a battery pack which is also on the seabed. And in a perfect world, that battery pack would be charged from an offshore wind application, for example. Lastly, what's uh, the maximum depth and the endurance of uh, such a system? Oh, the maximum depth is, is, is there is no maximum depth. Um, we are, uh, our application, the current high track um, uh, uh, um, product, uh, the high track crawler, so to say, um, is running on four or five kilometers depth because cables need to be trenched on those depths or even deeper. Very well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Javier.